and welcome to a quick update from the William Branham Historical Research Podcast. I'm your host, John Collins, and with me I have Charles Paisley. And Charles, we're discussing the very troubling and, quite frankly, very scary things that are happening over in Kenya. Um, I know you've been digging into it, I've been digging in. There really isn't a lot of news here, and the news has not yet made the connection that this was a William Branham message sect. But, um, you know, combined with what you found and what I've been going through, this looks to be very heavily influenced by William Branham. Yeah, there, there's several interesting things that we found just by analyzing the news footage. Um, one very interesting thing is in the pictures of the literature that they pulled out is a copy of the sermon, The Oddball, which is the sermon William Branham preached that empowered Leo Mercer um, at the park. So yeah. that was actually a specific sermon that William Branham preached empowering the creation of a cult commune in Arizona. Um, also, um, we, I've spent some time looking through his sermons. So there's several hundred of this guy's sermons on the internet, and there's quite a substantial number of them where they're preaching serpent seed. Uh, they definitely believe a total message version of serpent seed, um, which again is a dead ringer that these guys were connected to the message because that's how this thing has spread globally. Serpent seed has spread globally through the message. So. Um, another thing that was kind of interesting as I looked at some of the sermons, and none of this is in English, and I was kind of wondering why, because the people of Kenya speak English, and then as I started looking through the subtitles, I discovered that they are deeply opposed to having their culture assimilated, uh, which ties back to the serpent seed teachings that they hold, um, and they believe that uh, if they give in and speak English, that it's going to lead to uh, their assimilation, which is what they believe is is going on there. And, of course, we know that the driving factor behind Serpent Seed from the Ku Klux Klan is actually to prevent the assimilation of uh, other races. So it's very interesting that it's had that exact same roundabout effect in this group um, that they're taking it in such a way that in order to do things to keep themselves separate and from being assimilated into English speaking culture. Very interesting. It is interesting. And we've had, you know, so many questions coming in about this because again, the news has not yet made the connection that this was a William Branham message cult sect. And people are saying, you know, well, how do you know? And you can't blame William Branham for this, but on Monday, we're going to have Carlos Basso, who's the historian familiar with what happened in Colonia Dignidad, and he is just one example of many that are describing William Branham's sermons as already proven to hold neuro-linguistic programming, and people were using William Branham's sermons to brainwash other people, their victims. And this is not just one example. There are many, many examples of William Branham's sermons being used to manipulate the minds of the people. And the most interesting question I think that we've gotten so far has to do with the fact that the minister and his congregation are black and are from Kenya. And the question was, why are they spreading serpent seed doctrine? Why would they take this racist theology of William Branham and propagate it through a black community targeting themselves. And, you know, you have to step back and not think logically. You have to think in the ways of the white supremacy of the 50s and 60s, not even as, as of today. Back then, there was a international motive, an international campaign to spread racism throughout the globe. And we even have this on record, Roy Davis, who is William Branham's mentor and the Imperial Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan, was taking not just one white supremacy group, but multiple white supremacy groups into other countries. And it's not just that they were targeting white people. They were also targeting black people, basically to put in their minds these invisible walls that held them in captivity. They wanted to reach the black people. In fact, you'll find several instances of white supremacist leaders who are working with black people to try to manipulate them into whatever is their agenda, whether it's 
you know, not mixing races as William Branham and all of the white supremacy groups did in the 50s and 60s. They wanted to get this into the minds of the black people so that they, the black people did not, you know, marry the white people and produce interracial children. That, that was an agenda. So they wanted to get this into the minds of the black people. And we have numerous other examples of black ministers who are preaching the racist, very, very offensive serpent seed doctrine that William Branham plagiarized from um, Wesley Swift. And basically, Branham, he, he took the racial elements out of serpent seed, taught them serpent seed, and then he brought in his hybriding doctrine, which was heavily influenced by Wesley Swift, very racist doctrine. And then once the serpent seed was in the minds of the people, he put the hybriding in the minds of the people, that combination was exactly Wesley Swift's Christian identity doctrine, which created all sorts of hate groups from neo-Nazis. And I mean, it's, it's awful, awful stuff. But that is what was being spread in Kenya. Yeah, w- William Branham and the message is expressly opposed to all forms of, of racial mixing. So it, it, racial mixing is is a sin in the message, a deep sin in the message. And so, um, you know, John, historically speaking, you realize, too, the message moved into these countries before they were independent. The message moved into Kenya during the 1950s when it was still a uh, ruled by the United Kingdom. It was not an independent country at the time, same as South Africa and all these other countries and in Africa. Um, and at the time the message came into Kenya, uh, it was actually in the midst of the Mau Mau Rebellion. And, of course, you know, everything was administered by a white government in Kenya at that time. So as the uh, leaders of the message – and I, I have documentation. I'll, I'll pull out a magazine article on this, John, from uh, Herald of Faith. So Herald of Faith actually advertised the first forays of, of taking the latter rain into, into Kenya and – uh, on, on their very first trip over there, the, the government authorities from the United Kingdom said, um, that, I, and this is a direct quote, uh, the black people here will believe anything you tell them. They're ripe for the picking. And so they say, we've got to come in mass over here to Kenya and start converting these people to the message. And that's exactly what they do, uh, based on that prop. And it was a propaganda minister, uh, that was overseeing, um, indoctrination of people during the Mau Mau rebellion, uh, that they were working with when that happened. And they actually, uh, put message and latter rain evangelists into the Mau Mau concentration camps that were set up during the Mau Mau Rebellion. And that is how the message got started um, among black people in Kenya was at the concentration camps, the white leaders brought in message leaders to do indoctrination of the prisoners in the Mau Mau concentration camp. So I'll, I'll send you an article on that, John. We can, we can share with people, but this is how the uh, message first came into Kenya during the early and mid 1950s. Yeah. And you have people like Ewald Frank, who also was working with the leaders in Colonia Dignidad. Colonia Dignidad, yet another sect that taught the serpent seed, and actually it's on record. We'll be talking about it a little bit more on Monday. But they were using these doctrines to manipulate the minds of the people. And it's even deeper than brainwashing, but the generic term is that they brainwashed the people using William Branham's sermons. So... It's uh, this is awful stuff. And from what I'm understanding in the news that I've been reading is that this has been going on for some time. It's not even as recent as we thought. I think they're up to uh, what is it now? 57 graves they found each grave holding multiple bodies. And this is just it's a horrific thing that happened that's spreading. But we will keep you up to date as we get more information and um Stay tuned to William Branham Historical Research for updates. 